You are listening to Arcane Carolinas, an exploration of the Carolinas' folklore, legends, myths, and modern weird. Each episode, we examine the historical context of our topic and aim to preserve some of the stories that help make this part of the world such a fascinating place. Hello, and welcome to a very special episode of Arcane Carolinas. I'm Charlie Mushaw, novelty coffee mug collector. I'm Michael G. Williams, award-winning novelist. See, I went first that time so that I don't have to follow that. (laughs) (laughs) I just teed it up for you. (laughs) So today is a good example of what we're going to be doing with modern oddities, things off the beaten path in North and South Carolina. The title of today's episode is Nice Guy Fight Club. That doesn't seem like the sort of thing that nice guys do. Well, we're going to get into all that. (laughs) This one's going to jump around a lot. And I struggled to think of where to start with the sort of historical background of the story, right? Mm -hmm. So where I discovered the Nice Guy Fight Club isn't where the story ends, but our story starts in Orange County, North Carolina. Okay. So today's modern era oddity is going to hop between North Carolina, South Carolina, several counties in North Carolina, and wind up somewhere in Pittsburgh, North Carolina. That's where it ends. But the whole process began on Jones Ferry Road in Orange County, North Carolina, which cuts across University Lake, which is a wonderful place to go look at turtles. There's uh, some logs and the turtles just pile on top of the logs and on top of each other. And it's really weird. And I was out for a drive and saw some turtles, saw the lake. It was a nice thing to do on a sunny afternoon. And then there was a little sign on the side of the road. (laughs) But before we get to that, a little background on Orange County. It was formed in 1752 from parts of Bladen, Granville, and Johnson counties. Okay. So Orange County was cobbled together out of three existing counties. But in 1771, and again, we're going to jump around a lot here. Mm -hmm. In 1771, they lopped off a chunk of the western part and combined it with Rowan County to form the new Guilford County. Okay, I was going to say, it sounds like the counties were like much bigger than because Bladen County is nowhere near Orange County. Guilford County is a county away from Orange County. These are places that are pretty far from each other. Rowan County is pretty far from Orange County. And in the Devil's Tramping Ground episode, when we were talking about the history of Chatham County, you were like, wait a minute, that was a part of Orange? Geographically, these counties were massive. Okay. So another part of Orange got combined with parts of Cumberland County and Johnson County to later become Wake County. Okay. And the southern part of what remained from the slicing and dicing became Chatham County. And this was all in 1771. So they were doing a lot with the maps. Yeah. If you're familiar with the geography of modern North Carolina's county lines, you're able to sort of see the way in which this describes a spiral that eventually tightens on Chatham County. But I would never have assumed that they were made from each other. We're not done yet. Okay. So in 1777, six years later, the northern half of what was left of Orange just became Caswell County. They just cut it off and said, you're a new county. And then in 1849, the remaining part of Western Orange became Alamance. And finally, in 1881, what was left on the eastern side was cut in half, combined with part of Wake to form Durham County. Oh, no way. Are you confused yet? I am. (laughs) I was thinking in my head as you were saying that, and I was like, okay, well, the only thing between Orange and Wake really is Durham County. I would have just assumed that Durham County was older than that. Oh, so jumping around is going to kind of be a recurring theme of today's episode. So I find this fascinating because in some ways it mimics what happens. I'm a nerd for this kind of stuff. Uh, It mimics what happens in municipalities where parts of the outskirts of a municipality will incorporate themselves to avoid being annexed by the larger municipality. And so what you get is this finer and finer and finer granulation of municipal boundaries. Sure. I mean, just look at Carborough. It's enveloped by Chapel Hill. Yeah. It's a dot in the middle of a town. That's nothing against Carborough. It's just an example of that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Today's episode, again, titled Nice Guy Fight Club. So let's talk about the history of pugilism and combat sports to start. Um, <laughs> When this intersects with geography, if this intersects with geography, that's going to be amazing. I'm just saying that out loud. (laughs) We'll get to how it intersects with with, with hopping around. Okay, I'm I'm good. Basically, boxing's been around forever. Ancient Olympics had boxing. 
ancient Egyptians had boxing. The Carolinas themselves have a history of producing really great fighters. Really? There's a, yes, there's an organization, the, the Carolinas Boxing Hall of Fame, and it covers both North and South Carolina. World heavyweight champions Joe Frazier, Floyd Patterson, and James Bonecrusher Smith all come out of the Carolinas. I'm not somebody who follows sports, but I recognize those names. Yeah, big like, names. I would have never guessed that Joe Frazier came from the Carolinas. Yep. I grew up in a household where my dad enjoyed boxing. He would go to the local armory where they would have amateur boxing night. And, you know, people would go and smoke cigars and drink beers out of wax paper cups and watch boxing. And USA, the cable network USA broadcast boxing like every Saturday or something. Mm -hmm. um, so I grew up in a house uh, where we watched boxing. I am not a boxer, just to be clear. <laughs> I think my ears would be a little more cauliflowered because I don't think I'd be particularly good at it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not saying that about you. I'm saying that I also would not be good at it and cannot imagine myself doing it. I really like the sport. I actually prefer it over MMA, which is more popular these days. As far as combat sports go, I, I prefer boxing. Olympic athletes came out of the Carolinas, a guy named Calvin Brock. He is interesting in that he was in Bank of America ads as the banking boxer because he worked at Bank of America, but was also an Olympic level boxer. When was this? Uh, late 90s, early 2000s. Oh, okay. I, I, I guess I missed this. It's a weird way for Bank of America to advertise themselves. I don't know. It, it worked at the time, I guess. People knew him. He's a real estate agent now in Charlotte. I mean, good on him. You know, yeah. more power to him. I hope he got paid plenty. One person that I found really interesting from Olympic athletes is a guy named Bernard Taylor. He, mm -hmm. he was robbed of his chance. Not robbed. So he qualified for the Olympics for the 1980 games, but was unable to attend due to the U.S. boycott for the Soviet right. invasion of, of Afghanistan. But he went on to get a gold medal representing the U.S. in the Pan American Games. Okay. So South America, Central America, North yeah. America. World bantamweight champion Kelvin Seabrooks and a national champion, two national champions, Billy Bridges and a guy named Pappy Galt. Pappy Galt? Pappy Galt. G-A-L-T. G-A-U-L-T. Okay. So his rich history of combat sports in the Carolinas. Wow. I don't know. This might not make sense to other people. As a kid mm -hmm. growing up in the mountains of Western North Carolina, where we had exposure to zero culture of any sort. And so... <laughs> There are a lot of things that I missed out on and a lot of things that I misinterpreted because my exposure to them was limited. I assumed, I, like in my head, I associated boxing with the North mm -hmm. and specifically with cities, big Midwestern cities like Chicago or New York, because when I would see it in any form or fashion, I would see it in old Looney Tunes cartoons. <laughs> right. You know? And like, I would see this sort of depiction of boxing as something that happened like you were saying about the ones that your dad would go to the smoky room somewhere in an urban setting with like a bunch of people standing around smoking cigars so mill towns in north carolina produced a lot of boxers oh. so, so you'd have these little company towns yeah and people got to do something yeah. and the sons of the mill workers would you know take up boxing as a sport huh. and it was a source of entertainment in mill towns that's fascinating there's a professor at unc who's done really interesting interesting research into the social forces at work in mill towns. And a big part of it was make sure that every aspect of life happens within the mill towns so that people feel really tied to it geographically. Right. So that makes perfect sense. That's really fascinating. So here's where we start jumping around geographically. Okay. We're going to go down to South Carolina in 1712. Mm -hmm. There was a guy named John Barnwell. He was a really prominent colonist and government figure out of South Carolina. He was bringing troops up to North Carolina to help them with a regional conflict where, you know, certain indigenous tribes had aligned with the settlers and other tribes had not. So he was bringing up reinforcements from South Carolina for whatever regional conflict was occurring at the time. Mm -hmm. And soon after his arrival, he reported to the receiving council of legislatures, including Governor Edward Hyde, Councilman Thomas Boyd, and the Reverend John Ermston, among others. These are who are named in Barnwell's journal. Okay. So to celebrate his arrival, this is during a legislative session. They wanted to toast Barnwell's good health, uh, have a productive session, and make it a sort of a celebratory session. So they brought in an alcohol-laden punch to drink while conducting business. And they drank it all day. And they voted <laughs> on resolutions and addresses of thanks and appreciation. And they took all their clothes off and began boxing each other. 
as was the, the thing to do in the time, apparently. They took all their clothes off and began boxing one another. Yes. <laughs> I'd like to read from Barnwell's journal because the old timey <laughs> speak about how this went down is fascinating. And apparently Barnwell was a bit of a teetotaler, at least he was at that time, and he was not drinking and was like, oh my. <laughs> Because I feel like maybe I'm projecting, but I feel like there's a little more going on here than just a sport. Listen, the South Carolinian went up to North Carolina and was quite confused. So it might have just been a North Carolina thing. I don't who's I wasn't there, I don't know, but from the Journal of John Barnwell from April of seventeen twelve. This is available online through, you know, Google Academics for free. Sure. And I'm gonna stumble over some of these words because it is written very old timey. When I examined a little further, I found that two or three of ye assembly supplied ye rest of their wise brethren with such plenty of punch that they voted act signed and stripped stark naked and boxed it fairly two and two all the same day. He goes on to name the people that I named. A good deal of such stuff has made me laugh heartily since I came here where truly I had but a small inclination to mirth, and I fancy you will do so when I tell you Colonel Boyd informed me that I was the occasion of all this, for they were so long drinking my health that they knew not what they did, while poor me, drinking cold water, wishing for a little salt to season their grass and wampy, I fed instead on bread. Wow. So... He gets up there and they're all like, John's here. Yeah. (laughs) In my head, he walks in and they all yell surprise and they're all naked. And then they just start hitting each other. And, and then somebody's like, would you like some punch? And he's like, no, I'll take water. Thank you. And maybe a bit of bread. (laughs) <laughs> and you just watched them wail on each other. Let me go back to the line that I skipped about the names because I, I just wanted to keep it moving. But boxed it fairly two and two all the same day. Governor Hyde, Colonel Boyd, a member of Ye Council, the only ragged parson with Mr. Speaker, the provost marshal with another honorable member, and so round it went. So it was wow. like they'd wail on each other until one guy fell down. And they'd be like, all right, who's next? <laughs> so this is the earth. <laughs> I don't understand... <laughs> We have this idea in our heads of old timey people as being very proper. Mm -hmm. And it is just continually startling to me how, in fact, old timey people were the redneckest rednecks that have ever necked. (laughs) So I love that story. That is the earliest example of boxing in, in the Carolinas that I can find. Wow. That's amazing. I like, and these people were the legislature. For the yeah, they were like the council. They were they ran things. Okay, so they were like the colonial ruling council or yeah. legislature. Councilman, governor. I mean, yeah. the governor was there doing this. Yeah. Good times. It sounds like a really good time. I'm sure they had a blast. Oh, I'm sure they had a ball. I bet uh, they felt it the next day. I would hope so. Uh, <laughs> like, my gosh. Nothing like some shine punch and concussions. Oh, my God. I hadn't even thought about that. But you that had to be basically moonshine. Yeah, I mean, it's just, it was... They they made the punch. It didn't come from the store. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> they weren't running down to the ABC store to find <laughs> no, what they were going to get. 1712. No. Anyway, oh, I love yeah. that story. I love the way he describes it. I love <laughs> I love your interpretation of, I'll just have water, thank you. Maybe a bit of bread. Yeah. <laughs> and they're all like, John's here! <laughs> it makes me think of the 30 Rock episode where they go to Liz Lemon's 20-year high school reunion. Mm-hmm. Uh, he thinks that the Jack is the guy that was the party animal in high school. <laughs> yeah. I have so many questions about how this came to be the culture of these people. Was it like that in England at the time in government? Or were we the place where clearly uh, not with it people went to do their thing? Probably the latter. Yeah, I think so. So we're going to hop back to the present now because okay. journey with me back to modern day Orange County. Where I feel like it is a little less likely that I'm going to walk into a room and find a bunch of naked dudes hitting each other and throwing a kegger. We might get there. We might not. I'm not sure. Okay. We'll see. (laughs) That's subject to interpretation. (laughs) Oh, I'm driving down the road. It's a beautiful day out. Sun is shining. Good weather. And I notice a very colorful, small roadside sign like you would see for someone campaigning for office. Sure. Except this one appears to be homemade like it doesn't appear to be printed and it says nice guy fight club and it has nice guy fight 
And I am immediately confused. And again, you know, we're in the pandemic at this point. I, I got nowhere to be. I'm, I'm killing time. Sure. So I pull, I pull over to the next place I can find, pop the URL into my phone. I'm like, oh, there's a website. So I go to this website, niceguyfightclub.com. The title of which is, I want you to hit me, just not that hard. And I'm really confused at this point because I'm like, wait, what? So I keep reading. It, it's written in the first person. And it says, you're invited to join our nice guy and gal fight club. So it's open to anyone. A bunch of badass dweebs. You'll fit right in. And I mean that as a compliment. It's time to let your hair down and try to punch some people. Whether you've been schooled and hold rank at a prestigious gym or dojo, or earned your don't f with me certificate from the summer school session of surviving schoolyard bullies and other such numb nuts. Come on down and let's get a little friendly fighting going. I'm going to do a screen share. All right. Can you see my screen? I can. You know, we've got these old timey ladies punching a speed bag. We've got some guys wrestling. Oh, okay. There's a reward yeah, program. Fight 10 fights and get a little smiley face before your 11th or a gold star. Uh, I mean, what the f do we really have to sell the benefits of fighting? Seriously. Is it not obvious? Oh, it's not? Okay. Well, first, it's f***ing fun. The bleeps on this episode are going to be tremendous. They are. You get to challenge yourself. You get some practical exercise. Okay. Four, it's really f***ing fun. More practice with self-defense against fighters of different strengths build your community. But overall, it's f***ing fun. Build your community. So I think that means like expand your social network, right? Make uh, friends. Sure. I would believe that. So I'm starting to get the vibe. I'm like, okay, so th these are people that want to like grapple and spar and I how to join. First, you've got to be a nice guy or gal, not looking for mad dog killer types. We got families, got to be able to walk the next day. Some of us are old. I want to get punched. I just don't want to get knocked out. And I definitely don't want any brain injuries. See, here's where it starts to lose me because sometimes accidents happen, man. Yeah, like I feel like this is the liability form on this is either like one sentence long or it's 27 pages. You've got to be able to come out to the MAWD lab in Pittsburgh, North Carolina. So MAWD lab. So this is where it jumps counties over to Pittsburgh. Because Pittsburgh is in Chatham County. Yeah. So first Saturday of the month, 1 p.m. for a couple hours, they fight. I'm guessing the pandemic hit this group kind of hard and they haven't been able to do it. They have a blog where they do like a little recap of how the meetup went and they seem to have fallen off around February or March. So That's full disclosure, I did reach out to this organization and ask them if they'd want to come on the show and mm -hmm. explain. This is very much an exploration of something off the beaten path. I'm not, and I will use this phrase ironically, I am not trying to come off like I'm punching down here. I really want to understand. Plenty of people go to gyms that are boxing yeah. gyms. We have plenty of those around here. So if these people want to do this, that's great. I'm it's not just judging that. It's just the presentation that I'm like, wait, what? Is this safe? Yeah, um, like I, that's my concern. What happens when they do get hurt? Because it kind of feels like that's inevitable. Watching something like Xena or any of the various television shows where lots of people have lots of fights an old western you know where everybody's breaking bar stools over each other's backs in the middle of a saloon things like that obviously that stuff looks fun but obviously that stuff is also arranged and choreographed and people are not actually getting hit and stunt people make a living doing this and so i by no means am questioning this guy's motives or methods because I don't know this guy's motives or methods. It's just my immediate gut reaction is, oh, I don't know if I trust myself to not hurt other people or other people not to hurt me. We get to that. But before we get to that, no mats. They train outside. They have a roof to cover them. So I I'm picturing like a pavilion type situation. I'm picturing the covered picnic area at like a public park. Yeah, exactly. And, <laughs> and I really want it in my head to be happening in a public park. There are kids on the swing set and there's like a family wrapping up the barbecue that they had for somebody's birthday just like five minutes before that. And they're like, oh, sorry, we'll get out of the way. We know you were, you reserved the shed. And, and they're like, no, it's cool. It's cool. We're fine. You know, take your time. We're just here to hit each other mercilessly. But we're nice. So it's okay. Exactly. They're very polite about it with each other. So they go outside. It's in this open air setting. You do have to get vetted. You have to contact them and they will get back in touch with you and they will confirm if you are acceptable to join the club. That's really good. I'm glad to hear that it's not just like, here's a location, show up. Right, because the first thing I thought was like, what happens when some sadist shows up and just starts wailing on people? Right, I mean, they themselves talk about the potential for bullies 
And mm-hmm. I feel like this is the sort of thing where there are jerks in the world who would see this and go, well, I'm going to go teach them a lesson. Exactly. And they're explicitly trying to avoid that. And so good on them for that. So there is a waiver. Okay. Good. So once you're vetted, you have to sign the waiver and a new waiver is signed every session. It's about training as safely as possible. You'll communicate physical and mental limitations before participating. No hitting in the head. No striking below the knees while the foot is on the ground. That's to prevent knee injuries. No uncontrolled okay. flips or trips and only use moderate force that will cause no lasting damage other than bruising. So kept scrolling, kept scrolling, kept scrolling. I'm also uh, going to note that they're showing a picture of somebody hitting somebody in the head right after they say, don't hit each other in the head. <laughs> it's true. It's, it's all stock photography. Yeah. So the contact info is at the bottom. So I was like, huh, all right. What is this MAWD? What is this MA warrior discipline at gmail.com? So I was like, well, let me do a little bit dig- more digging. And I found two websites. Modernized Ancestral Warrior Discipline seems to be the organization that runs Nice Guy Fight Club. Their tagline is tap into your genetic inheritance. There's actually two websites. There's MAWD.club and then there's the Siler City Martial Arts.club. And both seem to be the same thing. Okay. And Siler City is also in Chatham County. It's like 25 minutes down the road from Pittsburgh. Basically, this site says that everyone has innate warrior abilities, that your body already knows how to fight off five people survive an attacker shooting a firearm at you, punch a baseball bat out of an attacker's hands while it's being swung at you without pain, fight an attacker with your arms literally tied behind your back, punch through walls without injury, trust yourself in any situation no matter what. Increase your striking power by 500% immediately. And I'm a little concerned that people who are seeking explicitly those sorts of described enhancements to their own physical capabilities are doing so out of a place of fear rather than a place of like wanting to explore the limits of their capabilities. We've talked about in the past the role of like a shaman in a village. Yeah being something that an individual that could not function in a warrior role could do and still bring value to the village. Absolutely. And there are a lot of traditions, modern traditions, historical traditions, modern like revivals and reinventions of historical traditions, whatever variety of take you want to have on it, where something is framed as a warrior tradition and is used as an exploration of spirituality, with the idea being that a spiritual warrior or a modern warrior would be somebody who is confronting the enemies within their own mind and spirit Mm -hmm. as much as they are preparing their body for whatever in the Mm -hmm. external. So the the modern ancestral warrior discipline site goes on. It's a a journey of self-discovery. Okay. You apply to this, but then it explicitly says you don't have to have a session to walk your warrior path. You don't even need to read our blog for perspective on how to proceed. You just need to trust yourself, know what you want, and know that there are only results, either results that align with what you want or that don't. All of that reads like that sort of spiritual warrior approach to things of because this is an inner process. Mm -hmm. Modern ancestral word discipline is not someone telling you to punch a certain way because the way it has always been done and they need to feed their ego. It is not mixed martial arts. It is not Brazilian jiu-jitsu. It is not, and it continues to name different martial arts. It's something different because it is yours. There are no lineages. There are no tests. There are no ranks and there are no masters. I like the fact that it's not this person saying, I am the greatest warrior alive and I'm going to teach you the secret system that only I know and you can only get it from me and you've got to learn my way or you're wrong. This is an interesting take on things. So there's a lot going on here. I definitely think this qualifies as a modern era story that's worth preserving. Definitely. It's just interesting. This is off the beaten path. It's not all the things that you can find by opening up the, the, I was about to say yellow pages. Nobody uses yellow pages anymore. (laughs) By by Googling, you know, Raleigh martial arts. Yeah. This isn't a Zumba class. Right. I have several thoughts. One of Mm -hmm. which is they say that you'll develop your own fighting style based on your strengths and weaknesses, which suggests to me that it is possible that I would develop a fighting style based on sarcasm. And (laughs) now I'm interested. (laughs) And then it occurs to me that, oh, I've already developed a fighting (laughs) style based on sarcasm, so I'm good. So you've tapped into your genetic. I have very much tapped into my genetic inheritance Inheritance. by developing my sarcastic fighting style. Wow. Yeah, I have. Just thinking about my family. (laughs) 
about whom I'm very sarcastic, and that is how we chiefly fight each other. My genetic inheritance isn't worth very much. Let's be frank. I have- Are you one of those people that inherits a bunch of debt <laughs> genetically? <laughs> Considering that I am an asymptomatic carrier of a genetic condition that has North Carolina in the name. So, (laughs) yeah, yeah. Let's just say that I came into the world already owing a lot on the genetic front. The website was spot on. We have more questions than answers. You've unlocked your genetic inheritance of being a wise ass as your fighting style. Yeah. I think you've just journeyed the path during this episode. Like I said earlier, people join boxing gyms. People take boxing classes at my gym. There's nothing weird or unusual about pugilism. No, not at all. Great. Have a ball. I'm really fascinated to talk about it. I'm really glad that we went over the website. There are lots of people who seek extreme experiences. I have sought extreme experiences in my life many times. And like we talked about with shamans, a lot of times the the gateway that people go through to that sort of spiritual development is an extreme experience in its own right. And there are probably people who have done this and really felt that it awakened a deeper understanding of themselves. And that's awesome for those people. I think ultimately what this proves for me, regardless of what I or anybody else thinks of this, or what goes on there you never know what is right around the corner that's our tagline you never know what's right around the corner and with these sorts of modern off the beaten path stuff Mm -hmm. that is just endlessly fascinating to me well we're going to be on the lookout for more if you can forward any ideas our way we're open to that as well yeah please we literally found this by just driving and reading a sign on the side of the road. God bless a back road. This was out there waiting to be found, and that's why it makes a good story for our Kane Carolinas. Talk about hidden in plain sight. Want to play us off? Sure. You've been listening to Arcane Carolinas. Thanks for joining us. If you liked it, give us a rating. Leave a comment. If you didn't like it, send us an email and tell us why. If you're not wrong, we'll try to fix it. And if you're interested in award-winning speculative fiction, including science fiction, urban fantasy, and horror, find me, Michael G. Williams, at www.michaelgwilliamsbooks.com and check out Falstaff Books at falstaffbooks.com. If you'd like to pick up some Arcane Carolinas merch, look at behind-the-scenes info, pictures videos, stuff like that, all the things that get cut, check out arcanecarolinas.com where you can get access to our Patreon, our Facebook, our Twitter, our Instagram, all that in one place, including the merch store. Buy a shirt. Clothe your body. Drape your body in our wares. Be our living billboards. I gotta watch my words here. <laughs> I don't want to watch.